meets the sea Catching fish is where I'll be Come rain or sunny skies I'm gonna grab my fishing line Yes, we're taking out some time That's fishing This has been a fishing tale Just like Jonah and the whale No place I'd rather be Yes, we're casting out a line Everybody's feeling fine That's fishing That's fishing Yeah, that's fishing On to the fishing <laughs> Hi and welcome to That's Fishing Today is the last show for season six. And we'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you to everyone that's been watching our show. Because without you, we wouldn't be doing it. So take credit, and thanks to you, we're doing what we love to do best. Now here's some short shots that we've taken over the last uh, 13 shows that we believe are the best of. So kick back and enjoy the best of for That's Fishing. All right, well, let's get into it, guys, and let's uh, flick a few of these around and we'll see how we go. good to throw the odd gummy back of course and we're all for that but it's also nice to keep one occasionally as well there's nothing wrong with that at all there we go. beautiful nice little gummy pinned in the corner of the jaw with the um, circle hook yeah yep Okay, of course. Oh, there we go. There we go. Beautiful. There you go, guys. Mate. Nice little eating gummy. Well, thanks, mate, for catching my fish. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> right, guys, what uh, Keith's going to show us here is uh, how to fill up the uh, small gummy we caught today. Uh, wish we had a few more, but it doesn't matter. Much it's still better good. than nothing. It's still good. Scott his head. Take off his bits. Looks like you've done this before, mate. Done it once or twice. Made a lot of mistakes. But um you get to know how to do it after a while. But yeah, there's only one one real thing you've got to take out and that's the the cartilage or the backbone, which isn't really a bone. I've always got trouble taking the skin off, mate, that's my my glitch. Oh that's that's the easy bit. People that I know actually build the actual skin off the flake itself. It's too hard. It's just easier to do that. You're going to cut it into nice bits anyway, so. Yep. And that's it. There's no, that's it. there's no wastage there. Beautiful. Oh, I've got to give it the pelicans are getting fed at the same time. Pelicans point. get a feed. Uh, 
Well, Mick, we're down here, Werribee South Boat Ramp. The sun's glaring. They said it's about a metre, a metre and a half. We just heard on the radio, and I'm not joking. It is shiny glass water out here. So we're in for a real good day today, as you can see. So, Mick, what do you reckon, mate? Let's get going, Let's get, get the bone, and we'll get out and get some of these whiting and some squid, and... Uh, Hopefully it warms up a little bit. Oh, here's a cold out here today, I tell you now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's about three degrees, and uh, let's get going. you're telling us about over this particular area at the moment we're going for squid on sand because normally we look for them on the weed yeah this up this area here we're across whiting bed so we've got little bits of grass spread out across a whole lot of sandy area here yep and you often find this time of the year the squid will actually try and herd up bait fish and so forth across the sandier flats okay. so it's the thing that they do over the winter months so we'll get down here and give it a go give it a go see down how it goes oh okay then if that's not going to work Something for different. us yeah we'll move back over to the more traditional uh, weedy weedy area. Yep. Yeah, okay then. And they've been catching a few good squid down this way too, haven't they? They have been. Winter gets a little bit hard, they can get a little bit patchy. Um, try and keep your jigs no, nice and active, we'll really move them around and give them plenty of flesh through the water. Um, yep. Hopefully, we can uh, antagonise them enough to Do get, get them strike. On. Yep, no worries. When you first get in the grounds, you're sitting there, you, you sort of hit, you know, hedge your bets a little bit, so we'll start off with some different colours. Run some nice bright colours, um, and I'll probably put a darker one on it just as a mix. And we'll just every 10 or 15, we'll flick through the colours until we find a colour that's working for us. It's just a matter of, as I said, just working through and not sticking on that one colour all day because uh, if you've got the wrong colour, you're not going to produce a fish. It doesn't matter how well you're working it, it's just not going to play. So it's just a matter of chopping and changing the whole way through. People talk about squid jigs, you know, got to use small jigs to uh, catch their squid. Just give you a look there, that's a size three squid jig in comparison to the size of the squid. They don't care, they just want to eat. So don't be afraid, keep your bigger jigs on and keep working them through the water because your smaller squid will take it as well. Don Tackle Talk with Big Mick. G'day guys. Now, we're doing a little bit of a tackle talk today and the reason we're talking about reels today is there's something we've been waiting for a very long time now. These brand new Shimano reels, these Stellas. And there's a few reasons why I want to tell you about these. And Mick, you're going to give me a hand because I'm not up to speed with them. But one of the biggest things is the waterproofing on these new reels. That's exactly right, they've taken it a whole new level. A lot of companies when they revamp a reel, they'll just give it a, a bit of a facelift Lift. and maybe whack another bearing or something like that in there. Yep. But Shimano have taken these Stellas and said, right, how can we improve this reel? Yep. I mean, there's the top of the range reel that they've already got, how can we improve? They're always looking- For at, that next level up. That's exactly right, and how yep. to make it easier on an angler. So they've done that with these new Stellas. Yep. Uh, probably the most important thing on those that we're talking about there is waterproofing seals yep. that they put through the reels. So now they've got 14 points of waterproofing through there. 14 points of water, that's to stop water getting into the actual reel. That's exactly so your right. servicing is actually getting less and less on the reel. Well it's to this point now where you can't service these reels on their own anymore. They need to go back up to the, the boys at Shimano yep. and they, they sit down and strip the reels out and do what they need to do. And they go from this little one down here? Yeah, which you can is go from a little 1,000, that's a little 2,500, all the way up to the big, the big one here, 30,000. Now there's 600 metres, was that right? 600 metres of 80 pound braid. 80 pound braid, 600 metres. Now I'd like to see a GT strip the line off of that one, mate. Well, yeah, the GTs, is, is, it's a good reel for those sort of boys, but more importantly, it was designed for the marlin and tuna boys. So oh, okay. the guys yep. that were lacking that little bit of capacity. Yep. Before the 30,000 was released, we ran up to the 20,000s. Oh, okay. So as you can see, there is a huge difference in size or spool capacity yep. compared to what we've had on the market so far. Right and up that, to these boys. That, 
bobbin is just oh, it's, it's, it's huge. It's, it's a huge massive. amount of line on there. So it doesn't matter you know, with your tuner or your marlin guys. Now that you know some of the guys in the past have had a little trouble with line capacity, we're not going to have that as an issue now with the new uh, so thirty get, thousands. Get all that braid on there, and you can fight that fish for so much longer now. Well, that's exactly right. And you've now, when you're clearing your deck out, you're not panicking because you know you've got. 600 metres of line right. up your sleeve, whereas and on the... Uh, and you let that fish have that real big run this well, time. That, that's exactly yeah. right. I mean, the, the 20,000, depending on what braid you're running, you're basically running 300 metres of 80 pounds. So you've yep. basically doubled your capacity. Oh, that's big. So for any information about that, go to thatsfishing.com.au, go to Mick's link, and you'll find out any more information or come into the shop and... Uh, put one in your hands. Put one in your hands. There you go. Anyway, that's Tackle Talk for this week. First one of the fish. Only because Eric's not here today. Now, if Mad Dog Morgan was here, he'd be the one of the first fish. G'day, mate. How you going? Sucks to be you at work today. Not big enough. Cheers. All the viewers. Mix out there. Casting out. It's got that little coloured lure on, but we're going to talk to him a little bit casting at the moment in the surf. So we'll see if we can catch a couple of fish first. So we'll uh, get over there in just a minute. We're just trying to get the distance to cast out along this line here so we can try and get a fish on a lure. We're just working an edge of a sandbank, moving out along a gutter. So usually your bigger salmon will act as predators. Anything that gets smashed up on the sandbank gets pushed across. Yeah, hopefully we'll get a good fish to hook up on this lure. Just trying to whack it out. Right, kind of peeling off to your left hand side and we're just working the lure back through that. And don't sit on the same lure all day, sit and change colours, because we're using a bright green at the moment, which does work, it's one of my favourites, but at times it doesn't work, we need to chop and change the whole way through. All right, so it's a little IMA lure that we're using here today. It's a bright green one, so it will stand out here in the surf. You'll notice he's also got a little bib at the front that allows it to dig down Without getting it pushed around too too far in the surf, and usually the salmon are a bit shy about coming up to the surface. It's a good way of pulling a fish without tumbling over. Yeah, that's exactly right. Really when the casting, it's just a matter of getting the you feel it in the rod, you feel that balance that you need for it. So I get mine up quite high, single finger on the on the rod, and simply just coming over and letting the rod load up and fire out. And that little lure there, we're probably casting, that's almost down to my backing, so we're probably casting that a good 50 odd, 60 metres. That's the advantage of braid as we were saying before. It's been real slow up until now. I've caught one fish. One crab. One crab. Sad. Very sad. We'll keep working at it though. The day is but young. <laughs> Night is falling. Salmon for the day. Take it on the snatcher, something a little bit different. The last one was on a popper. This one's been taken on the surf snatcher. It's a nice little fish. We'll send it back and we'll try and catch another one. See how we go.
had to outdo me, didn't he? Yeah, he was only second. And it's a big one. Irvial, one more cast before we pack up and go home and uh, we'll have another fish. There we go, guys. Oop. Bit of sand for a bit of grit. Grip, I should say, not grit. There you go. Beautiful little fish. That's all we caught today. So we've caught about three or four of them today. Not much happening. Anyway, doesn't matter. We'll throw them back and this rock right mongrel had to add to him, didn't he? Okay. We'll take another cast. Yeah, we'll take another cast. Yeah. <laughs> I snuck it down the back of his shirt. Would he notice? Hope you're enjoying the show. Now kick back and enjoy some of the bloopers now. <laughs> oh, you lost me now. <laughs> and the cameraman's having a moment. <laughs> <laughs> he had the camera on a 45 degree angle. He thought it was straight. <laughs> anyway. Nah. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, that'd be right. On the engine, engine management. I'll do that again, I can't even get the words out. Of the engine management system, I nearly got it right that time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only you guys were here. <laughs> Seriously. Go to the pub. Oh, I can't do that, we've got to be respectful, don't we? Yes. <laughs> now, while we're here, what... <laughs> what kind of maintenance that we should be doing? Now, like we promised on one of our other shows, we are... Uh... Hang on, start again, sorry. Hi, and welcome to That's Fishing at PCV Automotive. Very <laughs> today. <laughs> 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 what we also done too, is with our... Um, we're in the rotten mongrels behind me again, <laughs> isn't it? I can do... work in an office or something like that, and you'll be quite happy to uh, yeah, do all we, that for it. Yeah, bring it in, we can yep. give a price or whatever. Yeah. Well, good day, guys. Welcome to Tech Talk with. Uh, what's what's Gray? Sorry, starting again. <laughs> well, here's a little segment from everyone that's asked us and for all the emails that you guys have sent us about LED lighting. Kick back and listen to Paul because he's going to explain a lot of things about LED lighting. Hi, and welcome to That's Fishing. Today we're talking about LED lights for your boats, guys. And as you saw on our last season, we were talking to Paul from Bright Lights and we're talking about LED lights for our boats, floodlights, everything like that. Now this is the one from last season that we dropped in the water to 30 metres. And I'm not joking, we've never washed it. Just to prove a point, Paul, yep. never washed it. And it's still got mud from where we were sitting on the bottom of the floor. Now what you want us to do is talk about us taking one of these ones, these big ones. We'll go one of the bigger ones, yeah. One of the big ones and drop it down to 30 metres and how long do you want us to leave it there? Because we have the GoPro and we're going to mount the GoPro on there and see if we're going to catch any snapper. What do you reckon? Yep, that'll be good. Yeah, well you can take the 80. Yep. So this has got the 80 LED, you've got floods on the outside, yep. pencil on the inside. Yep. So you should be able to get it down on the seabed, give well, it a it tug and yep. move, it, move it about. Yep. See if you can there. see some fish. Now we're going out with Steve from uh, Bag Out Charters and he's put his hand up and gone, yep, let's go video some snapper. And uh, that's what we're going to do, mount the GoPro. So Steve, pressure's on, mate. You've got to get us onto the snapper straight away. I think the light itself will attract Track some the of light. the fish as well. Now when you said it had pencil beam in the middle, yep. that's like a direct beam. Direct beam. And that's like half of it, is it, or yep. the centrepiece? Yeah, just the, through the From, centre. Yep. So you've got about 30 LEDs, which are pencil beam, and then the yep. outside we've got spread, and that gives us a wide 120 degree beam. Rightio. Now these things are full waterproof. They're meant for four wheel drives, trucks. Um, what else? Well, they give um, even on boats. On boats, even on of boats. course, on boats. If yeah. you've got something to reflect off of, 
Yep. These will these will light it up. Yeah, that's it. They're IP68 rated, and that's what you want for all your boats. Explain all to people what the IP68 really means. Well, your IP68, there's there's a lot of different categories. Yep. And it's from whether dust can enter the product, whether yep. a screwdriver can enter the product, whether your fingers can enter a product. Yep. Uh, you've got your IP65, 67, and 68. Yep. Which are the most common that you hear about in the in the boating yep. side of it? Sixty five is you can jet wash it. Okay then. You yeah. Know, uh, but you wouldn't submerse it. Okay. Sixty seven you can submerse it up to about fifteen centimeters. Okay. Which isn't a lot, you know. But it but works. but yeah, if you're washing down your boat, okay, no problems. Yep. But we're talking serious, thirty meters. I mean, the Go meters. the GoPro itself is rated at thirty meters. It is. If, so, if you actually look, it says ninety seven feet. I think it says on the packet, and that's. 30 metres, basically, roughly. Yeah. Um, and that's what we're going to mount here. That's how much cable we've got. Yeah. So we're going to chop this one off. Yeah, really, any and anything that's on a boat should be IP68. Yeah. Well, how much is it? Because a lot of people are going to ask, how much power do these actually char like take? Take, yeah. yeah. Well, they are, like the one that you've got in yep. your hand there, they're, what's that, eight three-watt LEDs. Yep. So it's about 21 watt. 24 watt. 24 watt, yeah. <laughs> Should do be math. My is terrible today. 24 watt, so it's about 2 amp. But, so, okay. but, but the thing is, we don't drive the LEDs to their full capacity. Yep. So you'd expect that to be drawing probably about 1.2. 1.2 1. 1. amp, which is and nothing. You'll put it So you can work this out, yep. your normal anchor like globe yep. draws about 1.8 amp. Well, there you go. 1.8. 1.8 amp, and, and it normally just gives you a little globe. Yep. And that there, as you said, you it's know, a huge amount of light. Yep. We actually had current. this on the surf beach and it lit up the whole surf beach, just that. We, we were absolutely amazed, it really was. Yeah, and imagine what this is going to do. That's right. I mean, the amount of light that you get out now for the same power draw yep. is just, there's just it's chalk and cheese. Chalk and cheese. Yeah. And don't forget, um, all sorts of LED lights. Uh, go to the website, that's fishing.com, get straight to these guys. And I've got thousands of different LEDs. Like, yeah. think of something. It's bound to plug in and turn on, That's isn't right. it? Whether it be for the boat, the four-wheel drive, drive, the house. Trucks, trucks. house, you, you, yeah. just, you name it, there's a lot. And your tail lights on boats. That's right. All waterproof all LED. All IP68. All IP68. Yeah. So there you go. So you want LED lights for your trailer as well. Yep. These are the guys to see. So don't forget, thatsfishing.com.au. Follow the links, guys. Straight to Paul. And you'll send it to him or something like that. Yeah. I don't know, we'll go with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> now, I hope you enjoyed everything we've done this year. Come and enjoy, join us again for Season 7. Now, in Season 7, we're doing something totally different. We're going to be using charter operators. Now, we've got three on the go. They've all stuck their hand up and said, come on, Brian. We've had a lot of people ask us about getting on board with us. On charter boats, just what you want to do. Okay, we're going to do it. All the emails, let's do it. Let's get on board for season seven and get out on the charter boats. And I hope you enjoyed everything we've done for That's Fishing. I'm Brian Sanders, the Colonel, and Sammy, the cameraman. Say a bye. <laughs> Until season seven, catch ya. Never give me a rod, I lose fish. <laughs> <laughs>